So the day is all about Z transforms. Big picture, no intuition with this guy. There is no intuition. We'll talk about the math. That's pretty straightforward. With the DTFT and the DFT, I took one lesson for math, one lesson for tables. This time we're gonna combine the two. We'll talk about how you can derive the DTFT from the Z transform. How to notate it. And if there's time, I'll also talk about how to graph the Z transform to try to give you some intuitive idea about what it's about what the Z transform looks like. But in big picture terms, in continuous time, we started off in the EE230 talking about the Fourier transform. Actually, you finished up talking about the Fourier transform. That's the X to the J omega. And that's the same thing as the Bode plot. So you put in a sinusoidal steady state frequency like cosine of 100T to find out what the system does to that cosine of 100T. It's going to put out a cosine of 100T, but just with a different gain and a different phase. And that gain and phase is what your system is evaluated at J100. So you don't take the Fourier transform of your input signal, and you don't take an inverse Fourier transform of the result. You simply take that cosine of, say, 100t as an input to your h of j omega. And you say your output is the same thing as your input, just with a gain and with the magnitude where your system transfer function evaluated at J100 is that gain and that phase offset. And that's different than what we began the, the year with when we talked about Laplace transforms, X of S, that we calculated, you remember, is the integral of X of T, E to the minus S T D T, where S is complex, and there, we would take the Laplace transform of the input, multiply it by its transfer function, and then take the inverse Laplace transform at the end. So the Fourier transform is like the discrete time DTFT, capital X of E of J omega. And in fact, you can graph, we have been graphing the magnitude of the DTFT versus omega to get a Bode-like response that tells us if our discrete time system is a, is a filter that, that removes low frequency energy or high frequency energy. The Laplace transform though, is like the Z transform. We'll call that X of Z. And so it's important to know how you use these different transforms. So you use the Fourier transform, whether in continuous time or discrete time, to evaluate or to find the frequency dependent energy content. That's all one sentence. So the idea here is that you've got a, a graph versus omega or versus frequency, and you see something like, like this. And now you know that there's a lot of energy at that particular frequency at omega naught or F naught. So if this was a signal, we'd say the signal has got a lot of, of energy at this particular frequency. If this was a you know, J omega or X of E to the J omega if we're in discrete time. And then if it was a transfer function, H of e to the j omega or h to the j omega, then we'd say that this is a bandpass filter and it only passes frequencies around omega naught or f naught. Very different case for the for a use case of the Z transform or the uh, Laplace transform. This is to analytically, it means by, by hand using paper, using theories, solve for the output, solve for y, if you're given the input and the impulse response. 
And it can also be used to determine BIBO stability. So you'll remember for the continuous time case that you could graph a, the S plane over here. And any non-real poles or zeros had to appear in complex conjugates. And just by looking at it, can you tell, can anyone tell me, Noah, can you tell me if this is BIBO stable or not BIBO stable? Um, sir, I want to say it's not BIBO stable. Why would you say that? I feel like I remember from circuits too, or our signals, mm -hmm. uh, that it had to be on both, uh, on both the negative and positive side of the x-axis. So the rule is that BIBO stability, it's been a while, BIBO stability, there's a number of ways to, con to consider it. One is if your sum in, of the impulse response, whether H of, well, I've done it as a summation here, but otherwise it would be an integral of magnitude of H of T, either one. But if this is uh, less than infinity, if it's finite, or course this doesn't show you anything about the impulse response or for a continuous time all the poles are in the left half plane so all the poles are over in this region and since all the poles are it doesn't matter where the zeros are you can say that this is bibo stable and there's a similar geometric interpretation for our Z transform in the discrete domain, which we'll talk about. Instead of being in the left half plane, it'll have to do with whether or not the, the, the poles are inside or outside a unit circle. So it's a new way of thinking about things. The math, the transform is easy. 